Yo, what's good, everyone? Welcome back to the channel. Mark here. It's Friday, which means, again, it is another episode of Free File Friday. And as you can probably tell from the thumbnail and the picture on the screen, today we're going to be talking about stained glass. So if you've seen my previous video, I'll put it in the top corner there, of me doing the Pokemon stained glass image, which was this one. This is ha exactly how you make those designs. I'm not going to do it with that one because that video will take me probably about two, three hours to do because it's such a big drawing. So I thought I'll find another image on Google. And I'll show you exactly how to do it. It's exactly the same way. It's just a different picture. So once you follow this tutorial, if you wanted to, you can do something a lot more complex, uh, something like that. I do actually wish I made something like that because that is absolutely amazing. There's so much detail in there. But yeah, with the Disney stuff, there's so many different designs with it and there's so many different things you can basically copy. Or if you're very artistic yourself, you can make your own. But yeah, there's some crazy stuff out there. Some people have made fair play to them. It's really good. But yeah, for this one, I'm just going to keep it with this one. So I'll try and keep the video as short as possible. Because I know nobody likes to watch a video <laughs> longer than five minutes, really. At least that's what my analytics show me. Anyway, let's get into this again. That's obviously, it is another episode of Free File Friday. So I'll give this file away absolutely free. It'll be down in the description. Like normal, you just click the link. I think it's Dropbox again I use. Or Google Drive is one of them. But the link will be there just to drive, download it. But again, it'll be a zip file and a zip file will have a password on it. And the password I'll put somewhere in the video again across the screen. You just type the password. It'll just be a simple word. Like last week's, I think it was Steve. And the week before, it was just pass backwards. So SSAP, nice and simple. This week, I don't know what it'll be. I'll find out when I edit the video. But yeah, you'll need that password to obviously open up the file if you want to download this. If you don't want to download it and just make it own, let's just get into it and I will show you exactly how to do it. Okay, so it's very, very, very easy, this. But there's a, there's a few certain things you need to do in exact order to make it work. Okay, so all we're going to do, we're just going to go into the Draw Bezier Curves and Straight Line Tool. And with that image, let's just turn the opacity down the image slightly. Now, uh, there it is, fine. So on the Draw Bezier Curves Straight Line Tool, select that. We'll do the outline first of all. Click each corner. Now, the order you draw these lines does not matter one single bit. You can go on the inside here. And you can do it that way if you wanted to. I'm just going to try and keep it as simple as possible. So I'm just going to go on the outside. They're all going to be joined at one point. It doesn't really matter. So once you've drawn one path and you're happy with that, just press the space bar and that, that just turns off the, uh, the Bezier Curve Straight Line Tool. And press spacebar again, it'll go back to the most recent tool we've used, which again is the draw bezier. We just press B and it'll go into it. Okay, and we're going to draw another square. You could just duplicate the outside if you wanted to. Spacebar, and we're done. You'll find when you draw, if you draw a path that isn't complete, press spacebar and that finishes it. But if you draw a path, and you can finish it on, you see with this no turns red, it'll just automatically end it anyway, so you can just start a new path. Okay. So now with snapping turned on, I've got everything selected. It just makes life much easier. Back to the uh, Draw Bezier Curves tool. And I'll just find the point for the corner there on the point for the corner there. Space bar, space bar again to go back to the tool and we'll do that for each corner. If you find that keeps happening when you're pressing space, um, you can just move the canvas around by holding space and just moving your mouse. So if you see it happen on my screen, that is exactly why. So they're fine. And I'll do these little edges here. Spot on. Okay, now we'll start the outline of the rows. So I can just start here. We're just gonna rough this in. It's gonna be very rough. You can take your time with it if you want, but just rough it in and we can sort everything out at the end. 
snap that to the end there, spot on. So again, spacebar ends that, spacebar again to go back to the tool. Like I said, it doesn't matter which order you do these in, this is completely up to you. Just make sure you do everything and every path, try and close every path. It doesn't matter at the moment too much because again, we are gonna go into it and just tidy everything up at the end. So if you notice any gaps in the path, you can sort them out there. Yeah, we'll put in that there and down. Again, okay, guys, if you're new here, definitely check out some of the some of the other videos I've got on the channel. I've got some great videos on there. I've also got some great videos coming up. So yeah, if you're not subscribed, definitely click that subscribe button. Click the bell icon so you do get notified. And like I said, I've got some fantastic stuff coming up soon. I've just got a new toy, a vinyl cutter. Thank you very much to uh, to Matt, who let me borrow his. I haven't got a clue how to use a vinyl cutter, but once I figure it out, I'm going to have a lot of fun with it. And hopefully it makes some really cool stuff. And I'll definitely do some videos on that. So yeah, definitely subscribe, guys. Not only helps me, helps the channel. And I genuinely think you'll enjoy being subscribed to my channel. Because if you're watching this, it's because you probably own a laser cutter and you also probably use Inkscape. And you want to know how to do this exact thing. Or I've just posted this somewhere and you're thinking, what the hell is this crap? You clicked on it and you're like, no, I don't like this. <laughs> Still, subscribe anyway. It's free. 100% free to subscribe to this channel. Um, on any channel, but especially my channel. And also, if you can, guys, give it a thumbs up. Honestly, it helps helps me out and the channel out so much. Especially like YouTube's algorithm. Obviously, they push they push content that has more likes or dislikes. They push that stuff a lot more than they do with stuff that hasn't really interacted with their audience. Because for some of my videos, you know, I've got you know, a video there with what, 120,000 views. And I was also got a video there with like 80,000 views. I've only just hit 1,000 subscribers. So, uh, yeah, because there's no interactions here, it doesn't really do much for the algorithm. I don't really 100% know how it works, but all I do know is if you interact with it, it definitely helps me out. So if you can do that, that'll be great. While I'm just roughing this in, guys, you're not going to miss anything. Just, uh, Move away from the video screen, look down, and there's the subscribe button right there. I'll stop going on about it now, because <laughs> we're nearly done. Right. I said, yep, just roughing it in, no specific order. That I know I could have done better. Again, if you find you haven't got a selection to end it on, just end the path and then just go with it and just finish it off there. It'll happen sometimes. Inkscape is it's a strange program. Because when I was trying to figure out this how to do, I wanted to connect nodes from an end of a path to a middle of a path, but you just cannot do it. Like you think it'd be an option to do it because a lot of designers you know, they do things separately and then they really like to join them at the end. Especially when drawing like a pen tool. It's just how I, so I always done it. And I don't know why Inkscape just doesn't have that option. So yeah, if anybody who works at Inkscape is watching this, put it on suggestion. You'll definitely get a promotion. I know. <laughs> okay, last line. Okay, there we go. I am happy with that. That looks good. I think we've covered everything. If you haven't, if you don't know if you've covered everything, you just turn the opacity down, back up. Yeah, all looking good. Right then, let's sort out the sharp edges. Sharp edges do kind of work well with the stained glass effect because you know it's glass and it's got sharp edges. What you can do, you can go onto each path and you can just click. So you see you've clicked on this, you want to do this one, we'll click on that one. 
So with the edit path by nodes tool selected, click on your path, and then you can just move the edges around. Or alternatively, you could just select some nodes and you can just add a bend to it by using these up here. Unless you wanted this a node to be in a, yeah, a very specific place. Just have a play around with this. But yeah, spend some time doing this. If you know, like I said, if you if you wanted it to look perfect, I'm not. I won't do in this video because it does take forever. And like I said, I'll try and keep it short. But yeah, have a mess around with the nodes, clean everything up, and make sure everything looks good. I'm just going to delete the background image for now anyway. And we're just going to look to make sure everything is looking good because you could have one where you haven't actually closed the path. So it could look like that. Uh, so we just have a look at everything. I don't think I've missed anything. That's the good thing about having snapping on. See, it does help just snapping it right to the edge. Okay, I'm happy with that. What we're going to do now, just select everything. And this is where you may see you have missed a couple because I'm going to bring the stroke thickness right down. Uh, point 0.2 will bring that down too. Um, let me bring it down to point 0.1. Basically, bring it down as thin as you can possibly do it. So you can still just about see it. And I'll show you why in a moment. Yeah, everything still looks hunky dory. I've zoomed out a bit too far there, it disappeared. Right, so these are the steps you need to follow exactly for this to work. Because if you do this in the wrong order, you select the wrong thing, this is not going to work. So once you are 100% happy with everything, you've put the stroke. I said it can be at 0.5 or 0 0.05, but I'll keep it at 0.1 just so we can see it. Because how it works is at the end, when you change your stroke to the red, the laser calculates the exact middle of that line and they'll cut that out. So if your lines are too thick, let's say for example, we've got this and your stroke path is like five. This bit won't connect to that bit very well. If you see the, if you've seen the Pokemon one I've done, you'll see what I mean is the gaps, the, the torrents aren't as tight as I like them to be. So I will revisit cutting that out another time. So this is exactly what I'm showing you now. So you fix it now and you haven't got any problems later. Okay, right, back to it. So select everything. As long as you're happy with everything, make sure, again, your stroke's as thin as you want it, as thin as you can get so you can still see it. And now we're just gonna go path and now we're just gonna combine everything. Now this is one object. So our next thing we're going to do, if you notice, there's no fill. Everything is just a stroke at the moment. So with it all selected, we're going to go path. And we're actually going to convert the stroke to a path. So what that does, there's no stroke anymore. These paths, even, even though they're very, very thin, they've actually, can be, they've actually been converted to like physical objects now. So instead of being a stroke, it is now just a path. So you can add a fill to it. Let's just zoom out. But that doesn't matter. This is just something we need to do. So it's still one object and we've converted that stroke to a path. So with it all selected now, go path and I'm just going to break it apart. Okay. It looks terrible at the moment. So just click and drag and we'll delete that. With everything selected, we're going to change the fill to black and the stroke will have red. I mean, you don't really need a stroke winner at the moment, just, just so you can see it. This is exactly what we want. So if you look, each part now is an individual part. So you can send these down to your laser cutter, cut them out, put them back together, and it'll look like this, obviously minus the color. So you don't need to color this, but I just do just for reference. So when I'm basically dragging everything and nesting it into a page ready to cut, I know what is what. So I'm changing the stroke there. It's the fill I want to change. So that's the outside. Uh, we'll do these bits as well. Probably missed one or two. 
and these can just be like a uh, what color can I make these? There we go. Oh, I missed that one. And we'll do the leaves next. And then green. Let me just change the color of this to that. And then there's just the petals then. One in the middle, which I can't seem to select. Right, there we go, guys. That is it. That's the hardest bit done. Just pop the stroke back on because you're going to need a stroke on this whole thing. And again, we're just going to bring the stroke. Point one will do it. Let me just move that out the way. And we are page so again once you're happy with everything everything is all done right there each part now is an individual part so say this is the page uh the size of your laser cutter you just want to drag everything out and nest it on there just so it's within that page You, you probably want to do this a little bit neater so you're not wasting too much wood or acrylic, whatever you're going to be using. So with that now, what I'll do, I'll save this page as, we'll just say, you know, outside class. You can delete them and then you can do the same with all these. Just nest them into your page. Like I'm not doing it perfectly at the moment, I'm trying to do it nice and quick just to show you. There is uh, some software you can get which automatically does nest it. But the one I've got stopped working for some reason. But yeah, let's just say example, we've got this, you know, if you need to put it on two pages, put it on two pages. If you find these are not fitting, and you try and resize them to fit on there, it won't fit the picture anymore. So don't resize them. If you find it's not resizing, go all the way back to the original picture and then resize it that way. Okay, so once you're happy with that and you've saved that page, then to go ahead and call glass, we'll see, we'll do the leaves. We'd save that then, obviously, as leaves, delete that, and then the rows. Or you could just put the rows in like that, that is fine. If, you, if you've if you colored it as well, make sure you turn the color off of red on the rows, because with my laser cutter, red's the color to outline for cuts. And if your rose is red, it's not gonna work. <laughs> so we can leave that like that, and we can save that as rows. There we go, so we've got, uh, what was that, four pages? Yeah, four colors, so four pages. So I'd send that onto the laser cutter. I'd cut each individual piece out. I would recommend printing this actual picture out as well on a piece of paper. Because if you, like I said, if you've seen the previous video I've done of making the Pokemon one, I it, it was like an impossible puzzle. I couldn't put them back together for the life of me. So I had to print it on like three pieces of A4, um, lay that down on my workbench, and then, you know, just put them together on top. So yeah, especially if you're doing a more complex picture. So if you're doing something like that, yeah, you definitely need to do it. I mean, some of these pictures makes me want to make some more stuff. It really does. That's amazing. Anyway, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not getting into that now. But yeah, there we go, guys. Like I said, it is easy. You just need to make sure you follow some of them steps exactly. So draw the outline in any way, shape or form you want. Make sure the stroke is nice and thin 
and then you just combine everything. Then you convert the path, the stroke to a path, and then you just break it apart. Nice and easy. So again, yep, yeah, this will be the file then I'll put available to download. I mean, just resize it to a small thing, you know, like that, and just do a test print or something small like that. See how it goes. You don't have to do it with color. And um, yeah, put it together, just see how it goes with you. Uh, so I, I, I hope I've covered everything here, and I hope I haven't made it too complicated for you guys. Um, but yeah, again, any questions, you know, or anything like that, put it down in the comments and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And once again, if you've watched this video, you know, if you've watched it here, go, go down and give it a like, because again, it does help my videos with YouTube's algorithm. It really does. Uh, also pop a comment in as well. And if you're not subscribed, click the subscribe button, guys. Honestly, I really do appreciate it. For everybody who is subscribed, thank you very much. Um, so that's it. Again, I'll put the password on the screen to download this file. It would have been somewhere in the video to uh, to be able to open the file, the WinZip file. So if you haven't seen the password, just have a look for it and it'll be there for you to be able to open it. All right, guys, so I'll end the video here. I said try and keep it as short as possible and, and as easy to follow as possible as well. So, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I will see you all in the next video. You all have a good one. Ta-da-da.